Hello again, and welcome to the Roy Williams Show. We'll be talking Carolina basketball here for the next hour with the Hall of Fame head coach of the Tar Heels, Roy Williams. We'll talk about Carolina's last couple of games, preview the matchup with Wake Forest coming Wednesday now at 7 o'clock on a game time change for that one. And you'll hear some of a conversation with Tar Heels senior Andrew Playtech. Adam Lucas and I had a chance to talk to Andrew. think you'll enjoy that. That's coming up in just a little bit. But let's get busy with Coach here. And Coach, a split week for the Heels. Carolina, two more games. It came down to the final minutes. 81-75 win over Syracuse on Tuesday. Then falling to Florida State, 82-75 on Saturday in Tallahassee. Your thoughts on the week that was for your team? Oh, it's uh, it's amazing. Things are happening quickly, and but you never know one day to the next what's going to, what's going to happen next. Do you play this game or that game? But uh, you know, the week it was. Uh, we've been in, in our league. I think we're three and three. Is that correct? Correct. And three and three in the league, we could be six and zero, oh, but we could be zero oh and six, <laughs> and that's that's what it is. But Syracuse, we knew coming in, it was going to be very difficult to, uh, trying to get adjusted with such a young team to play in against their zone. Uh, we've got three, four. And one time, I think we even had five freshmen on the court, and Syracuse's zone is different and yeah. really, really good. And when you have experience, it helps you, but it's still really, really, really good. Uh, so we were able to get through that game, and uh, uh, Leaky made a big basket at the end, and uh, uh, you know we got a stop on the other end. And uh, but it was as you say, it went, went right down to the wire, and we made free throws. And uh, no Leaky's basket, I guess, was Notre Dame. That's yeah. what I was talking about. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> he had remember. a big assist late, got he it to had, Armando. Uh, that's right, he had a big one of those. But still, you know, we made some free throws down the stretch. Uh, I don't think we missed a free throw in the last couple Correct. of minutes, and uh, I think it was seven for seven or eight for eight, something like that. Uh, but Buddy Bayheim killed us in the first half, and uh, Leakey and everybody played better in the second half. And he had 18 in the first half and zero in the second half. So yep. needless to say, uh, they did a better job, and Buddy perhaps missed a couple that he could have made too. Uh, and then turn around and go to Florida State and scared to death. I'd seen their previous game where they scored 100 million points against North Carolina State and shot 70% from the floor. And uh, so we knew it was going to be a really tough game. They're really good. They uh, won the regular season last year. Uh, had two of those guys drafted in top 11 picks, and uh, rightfully so because they had a great, great year. But they are really, really good and deep and mm -hmm. athletic and defend you and all those kind of things. And they have guys that make shots too. Yeah. Uh, so it was a it was a tough one. But uh, inside uh, a minute, uh, you know, it's a two point game inside a minute if I'm not mistaken, right. and uh, we just didn't get over the hump. You used the term uh, attack or be attacked mm -hmm. leading up to the Florida State game, meaning you needed your team to stay aggressive throughout. But afterwards, you said you didn't feel like it happened consistently enough to be successful. No, exactly right. <clears throat> I stole that. I didn't steal it. I've just borrowed it from uh, Coach Steve Robinson. He's always talked about that uh, Syracuse is one of those teams. Duke is one of those teams. You've got to score, so you've got to keep attacking. Mm -hmm. And uh, Florida State athletically – uh, they're so superior to most teams that you play. They pressure you so much that if you get on your heels and start backing up, you have no chance. Right. So you better keep trying to score. But uh, attack or be attacked came from Coach Robinson. And there were, at times during the game, I thought we did a good job of that. And other times we just didn't attack at all. Florida State shot the ball very well, as Coach referenced. Eight of 16 from three and four of five in the second half there. And 26 of 27 from the free throw line, Coach. Mm -hmm. It's hard when the other team's not giving you many chances there at the line. Yeah, they're not giving you any help. I mean, I remember one game we played at Wake Forest a long time ago, and they were 33. 32, I think, of 32. 32 or 32, 33 for 33, whatever it was. They didn't miss. And, you know, the other teams, <clears throat> if they're good – and you beat them, it's because they made a mistake or two. And yep. uh, 26 for sit, 27 is not much of a mistake. R.J. Davis, <coughs> coach, your leading scorer in the game, he had 16. And nice two games for R.J. this past week after he had had a difficult couple of games, which is, of course, totally normal mm. for a freshman going through ACC play. Yeah, and I think uh, six for nine against Florida yep. State uh, on the perimeter was by far the best shooting that we had. 
uh, made a couple of good drives and took the ball to the basket as well. And in the Syracuse game, he did some good things, came up with a big steal late in the game, made a big three, made free throws for us. So uh, the last two games have been uh, his most consistent games on the offensive end of the floor. Uh, we need him to do a lot better on the defensive end of the mm-hmm. floor and, and being a quarterback out there. But, uh, no, and I just found out a few moments ago he is the ACC Freshman of the Week, and okay. so that's, that's nice for RJ, too. Coach Anthony Harris played for the first time this season and certainly made an impact. Five points, three assists, and only played about eight and a half minutes in the game. Yeah, and it was a very important eight and a half minutes, and I just wanted somebody out there that would raise our intensity level, that would raise that energy level on the Mm -hmm. court, and we needed to do something. And I went down and talked to Doug, our trainer, and said, are you sure? And he said yes. And, you know, he had practiced – He's been going half court three or four weeks or two or three weeks, mm-hmm. quite a while. And then we released him, got him into full court stuff too. So he had practiced. It felt good. We've been very cautious with him. But still, I scared to death. So, yeah. And Doug said, no, he's ready to go. And I asked him, and he said, yeah, that's well, let's go play. And put him in, and he was a very much a positive influence on us during his time in the game. Yeah, played some really good defense when he was out there too. Mm-hmm. I mentioned on the air, shows what you guys – think of his defensive ability he came in the game and was guarding MJ Walker who's one of the better players in the conference yeah MJ had a great game against us and Anthony did a nice job he's MJ's hard to guard yeah. he's got that size and shooting ability but in, but in fact Anthony was the defensive player of the game and only mm. played eight and a half minutes last thing coach before we take a break you you and I had talked about movement off the ball a couple of weeks ago Th- these last two weeks 19 or last two games excuse me 19 assists on 27 field goals against Florida State 18 on 29 field goals against Syracuse that's about two-thirds of your baskets coming off assist a a better number in that regard oh much better than what it was the first several games of the season and we need it to be even better Uh, you're hard to guard if you do that if you make a lot of assists you're hard to guard because you're moving the ball and moving the personnel and that's something that we like All right, we're going to take a break, come back, talk a little bit more about this past week for Carolina basketball. We're going to get to your questions for the head coach of the Tar Heels coming up soon as well. And as I mentioned earlier, you'll also hear an interview. Adam Lucas and I had a chance to speak with Andrew Playtech. You'll hear some of that too when we return to the Roy Williams Show from Learfield IMG College. We talked some about that Syracuse game on Tuesday night in the Smith Center. The final, again, was 81-75, Tar Heels over the Orange. And you mentioned the defense on Buddy Beheim in the second half, Coach. One big part of that game. Another one was your offensive rebounding. Mm-hmm. Carolina missed 44 shots in the game and got 24 <laughs> offensive rebounds and 24 second-chance points. So just tremendous numbers there. Well, I think it was 24 second-chance points for us and six for them, Correct. if yep. I remember right. And uh, – you know, you know, you've heard me talk, and I've talked to you before. You've got certain strengths that you want to be a major impact in the game, and sometimes you've got some weaknesses that you want to make sure that they don't have a major impact in the game. And our inability to shoot the ball uh, so far this year has been a big problem for us, so you can shoot it better if you get it inside. And so we've got to try to work inside out first. So we did that, but also we have an advantage with our three or four or four guys that we can put in the game inside yep. with Walker and Armando and Dayron and Garrison that can impact the game. So we've got to make sure that that's an important factor. And I think those guys beating the boards to death was huge for us. Seven different players had at least one offensive rebound in the game for the Tar Heels. Coach, I know you were disappointed there was a 10-second violation near the end of the game. But other than that, mm-hmm. handled some pressure. You mentioned making all the free throws in the last 90 seconds or two minutes as well. It's good to see some things that gave Carolina trouble at times last year, mm-hmm. late in games. You guys executed very well. Well, against Syracuse, we did. And uh, I think that uh, last year we had several things that went wrong last year. But uh, uh, I like this team. I think we have the ability to hurt people in the zone or man. Mm-hmm. I think we have the ability to play against the press, but you got to do it on game night. It doesn't make any difference what the head coach says. Last thing, Coach, good to see Garrison have a good game. He was 16 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists, a couple blocks and steals. Felt like he was really in the rhythm of what was happening. Well, he was, and he got it early, and so it really made their zone always be aware of the other guys in there. And mm-hmm. then late, it was Dayron that we just threw it to him in the post, and he was scoring. But I think giving Garrison those uh, baskets early was great for him. 
So Carolina won that one, 81-75. That, of course, was before the Florida State game. Heels going into this week now, 8-5 and five overall, 3-3 three and three in conference play. We're going to take a break, come back, start getting to some of your questions for the head coach of the Tar Heels. It's the Roy Williams Show from Learfield IMG College. Even though we're having to do our show a little differently this year, not at top of the hill, we'd love to be there with Tar Heel fans. We're recording on Mondays for air on Monday evening, and you can still get questions in for Coach. You can send a tweet right to me, at Jones Angel. Angel has two L's at the end, as you know. Or you can send an email to asktheheels at gmail.com. That is asktheheels at gmail.com. And we're going to go far and wide here for some questions in our three question segment and our top three questions presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, reminding you to practice your three W's. That's wear, wait, and wash. And they resolve to keep North Carolina healthy. And we're going to start actually closer to home and then we're going to go a couple far away places, coach. But first one, this comes from Kim. Kim wanted to know, do you feel the lack of fans at home due to North Carolina regulations, of course, Versus some other places you go, Georgia Tech, for example, Florida State, for example, did have uh, more than 1,000 fans at the game. Do you think that is creating a disadvantage for your team when you're heading on the road? Well, I think it is, but it's uh, it's what the world is. Sure. It's where we are right now. But, uh, yeah, Florida State, uh, Iowa, uh, where else did you say? You Georgia Tech. Georgia, oh, yeah, Georgia Tech. And they had their pep band yeah. right above the bench, and the players couldn't even hear what I was saying. But, uh no, I think it's uh, it's more of a positive for the home team. You know, if things are going poorly and they're into the game, they can sort of bring you out of the depth of it. If you're going great, they get through get that enthusiasm up there even more. So I think it is, but it's uh, it's the world we're in, and we got to play. And it doesn't make much difference to me. I mean, I enjoy the pageantry of it and everything, but I'm concentrating on the same things now <laughs> than I would be if the crowd was packed. But uh, I think our guys would definitely enjoy it more, and it is little bit of a home court advantage but uh, it's part of the game have you felt i don't know if safe's the right word have you felt comfortable on the sidelines e- even at the places where where there are a, a bunch of people at the games yeah because i come out during warm-ups but very few coaches do but i come out there the whole time and sit and i'm looking around and sitting and have two people here and four people over here and four people here but they've really done a nice job because almost all almost all of the people are wearing masks yeah. and they're separated so i like that part all right coach the, our next question comes from Ecuador, Scott Zimmerman sent this one in. Again, this one come from Ecuador. Wanted to know what you see the ongoing influence of former players within your program. He said, for example, the impacts of guys like Tyler Hansborough or Tyler Zeller when they practice against or hang around your team in the offseason or whenever it might be. Well, I think it's going to always help us uh, that our players love the university, love the campus, love the town, the community to be here a lot Mm -hmm. and several of them have bought homes here or built homes here so I think that speaks volumes for how much they enjoyed their career that uh, they've picked this place to be one of the principal places where they're going to live so it is a big big positive for us Uh, when we get them out there on the court and playing against them like we did this fall we had Kobe White, Theo Pinson, Cam Johnson, Tyler Zeller, and Tyler Hansbro. Pretty good five there. I could take that to Wednesday <laughs> night and feel a heck of a lot better, I can tell you that. But uh, uh, having our guys be able to play with and against them in scrimmage situations early in our preseason practice is always great. I think especially this year when you didn't have yeah. kind of some of the normal stuff that you would have to prepare for a season. Yeah, I told the freshman guards, RJ and, and uh, Caleb, that you ought to learn some things from Kobe. And one is how hard he comes at you. Mm -hmm. It is not comfortable for you, so do that to the other guys. And uh, things like that are really positive. All right, Coach, our last question here in our top three questions presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. This one comes from Istanbul, Turkey. Wow. And Aris sent this one in. Wants to know, do you ever get a chance to simply watch a basketball game for fun and just watch the game to enjoy watching the game? Oh, uh, yeah. I enjoy watching a lot of basketball games. I enjoyed watching a lot of basketball games even when I'm working on the road recruiting. Um, invariably, I pick up things that I like and come back and try to do part of it. So mm-hmm. I enjoy that part. I love the game. I love the game where you'd send, you have so much individual things going on, but the team, getting those individuals to make the sacrifices for what's better for the team. And I always believe uh, the better team you have, the players are going to get the, I say, the awards and rewards. Right. And so that's what we try to sell and promote with our program. But 
Uh, I love going to see my grandchildren play their little games. Uh, <laughs> I would love going to last year to go to Chicago and see Kobe White play. Uh, I love those moments uh, a great deal as well. Have you been able to, because I know traditionally you try to go see the guys play, have you been able to follow what they're doing or, or keep up with anybody this year with the yeah, unique circumstances? A little bit, but not much. I would have already been to see Cole Anthony play. Right. I see starting now and those kind of things, but uh, it ball's not going in the hole quite as much as he had wanted to for that higher percentage. Every night I go through all the NBA box scores and see how our guys did. And yep. I'm acting like a parent. Uh, I'm only looking at number of minutes played and number of shots. Points. That's right. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. But, no, I keep up with them. But by now I would have been uh, into the NBA to see Cole play for sure. All right, let's take a break, come back. We have a little bit more to do with Coach, plus an interview with Andrew Playtech coming up soon as well. By the way, those last three questions brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, reminding you again to practice your three W's, wear, wait, wash. They resolve to keep North Carolina healthy. More to do with Coach after this. It's the Roy Williams Show from Learfield IMG College. Welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for being with us. My name is Jones Angel. He, of course, is the man you're here to hear, and that is the Hall of Fame head coach of the Tar Heels, Roy Williams. Coach Christopher Sanders sent this question in via Twitter. We had mentioned Anthony Harris a little bit earlier. He wondered how surprised and or impressed you were with his effectiveness in the FSU game, considering that he hasn't played competitively in, in so long. Well, it was a challenge for him to get ready to play that. And I, we told him that as we we're leading up to, I said, I don't know when I'm going to put you in a game. I don't know when during a game I'm going to right. put you in, but you're at that level now that I can put you in and just concentrate and be Anthony. And uh, it's been a, over a year right. uh, since he played in a game. Now he's been involved in practice and that's been good for him and he's done a nice job there. But what he did uh, Saturday was really impressive to me and I'm sure to all those teammates and coaching staff as well. And, Coach, I, I think you mentioned the word earlier, you're going to be careful with yeah. it. I mean, it has been since December of 2019 since yeah. he had played, and he only played five games in, in that yeah. season. Yeah, we're going to be careful, to say the least, but uh, at the same time we want to give him some opportunities. Sure. Because he's worked so hard, to deserve, and he deserves it. But, yeah, it'll be a challenge trying to figure out what's the best way to use Anthony. Coach, this one comes from Michael Gaskins and wants to know how you feel the transfer portal is affecting teams and the game. He says that it just seems that you see so many more players that are jumping in that portal so so early. Well, it is. I, I never look at the portal. Don't have any idea if it's got one player on there already or 5,000, but it's closer to 5,000 yeah. by the end of the season. You know, I have torn uh, feelings about it. I think, you know, yeah, kids should be able to have that right but also that I invest for a kid thinking I'm going to have him as long as he's going to play college basketball. Right. And, <clears throat> you know, we invest the time and the money, yes, but it's a personal investment with me. We had a couple of kids, you know, leave them last year, Brandon Huffman and uh, Jeremiah Francis, and I'm still checking to see how they're doing uh, because I care about them, and it's important to me to have those feelings. Uh, the year before, we had Seventh Woods, and uh, that means that we hadn't had uh, – we had – some guys in 2010 or 11, something right. like that, and hadn't had anybody for eight or nine years in a row. At one point, we were the only team in the country that had not had a transfer in a three-year period, and we stretched it all the way up to eight or nine years. So guys generally get here and like it. Uh, so I felt feel bad about them. I also believe that you make a, a judgment that you're going to be in, and I mean all in. I'm right. committed to you, and I expect them to be committed to me. It's hard to do that to your teammates and uh, to leave, and yet the biggest thing is that people are given advice and they should stay out of it, let the young man and their family members, but so many people are giving guys advice and they take that advice and leave. And I'm one of those guys, old, old school, I guess, that I believe if things are tough, then get better, make them better. Yep. And, but yet with the transfer and the ease and no sitting out right now, kids are just going to leave if they didn't get – 12 shots a game, he only took 11. You know, so it's a little bit of a weird thing for me. Last one, Coach. This comes from Ryan. He says he saw that Nasir Little had a lengthy battle with COVID and just recently returned in the last week or so. He was just wondering if you had spoken to Nasir at all or, or knew how he was doing. Yeah, I spoke to Nasir. It's been a little longer than a week or so. I spoke to him. Uh, he was already back practicing, but uh, the last time I talked to him was probably – 
gosh, I'm going to think three weeks ago. He did have a difficult time with it. It was very uncomfortable for several days for yep. him. But uh, he says when I talked to him, said he felt really good. He's been uh, – uh, at least one game recently I saw that he got in, but I check the box scores, as I said, every night. Coach, after this break, uh, folks listening are going to hear an interview with Andrew Playtech. Adam Lucas and I had a chance to speak with Andrew, and in his senior year is finding a way to, to seemingly help your team in a lot of different ways when he's coming in and, and try to provide a little bit of a steadying force as an older player. You know, Andrew is an is unusual young man in a positive way and yeah. a negative way. That's just who he is. <laughs> he's like all kids. I love him to death, and uh, – He's very competitive. He's a very hard worker. Sometimes he's his own worst enemy. He has an ability to shoot the ball, and he has an ability to to defend. And yet sometimes he has an ability for me to say, why would you even think about doing that? (laughs) But that's who he is. And, uh, you know, you go back to the second game of the year, I guess, against uh, UNLV. I mean, they have us, what was it, 16 to nothing or 18, 13 to nothing, something like that. And Andrew got us back in the game immediately with his offense. But he's done some good things defensively for us as well. And I'm happy that it uh, seems to be going well for him. I just need it to go better. Sure. Because if, if he plays better and does better things, we're going to be better off. So you'll hear that conversation with Andrew after this break. Coach, will we join us uh, for the final segment of the show? We'll preview Wake Forest. All that coming up on the Roy Williams Show from Learfield. IMG College. So a time change for this game Wednesday night. It was originally scheduled for 9 o'clock, Carolina and Wake Forest in the Smith Center, but due to the postponement of another game, this game slides up to 7. Wake comes in at 3-5 and five overall, had another close loss, 64-60 against a good Virginia Tech team on Sunday night. And Coach Demon Deacons have a new head coach as well, and Steve Forbes. Do you know Coach Forbes at all? Steve is just doing a great job. He really is, and, you know, he's a very good coach in East Tennessee State. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I think won the regular season Correct. or the tournament or both the last couple of years, and I follow that league because Wes Miller's teams play there as well. Uh, but Steve's really done an amazing job to get the job fairly late, and so many people leave. Sar left to go to Kentucky, and the other kid left, two or three other kids yep. left. Now he's got to almost put a whole team new team out there and he's done an amazing job they they've really been good in every single game but yet right at the end it hadn't gone their direction so I'm hoping that we can keep that going for <laughs> one, one more <laughs> one more game but he's he's a good guy he's a funny guy he's a hard-working guy he's a guy that I enjoy listening to him and uh, and I think that uh, what he's done at Wake has been really really remarkable because this these are the big this is the big leagues yeah and to put a team like that, and they've been competitive in every game they've played. Tough year to be a first-year head coach, yeah. too, with all the, the yeah. different stuff you're trying to deal with. Coach, also, not that any stretch isn't important, but two home games, at least scheduled right now for the Tar Heels, feels like a big, a big week for your team. Well, it is. We've got to step up and play well and try to protect our home court. We've, we've got one road win, but we'd like to get a lot more, but we need to protect our home court. So that's 7 o'clock Wednesday night, Carolina Wake Forest, and at least scheduled right now is another game with NC State Saturday at 2. That would be this weekend in the Smith Center as well. Coach, as always, great to see you. Thanks for your time, and look forward to speaking with you next week. Okay, Jones. Everybody have a great day and stay healthy.